conversation here listening to people. Some of it does give me memories yeah, for another time. And I want to say to you a simple fact that if the capitalist class in this country cared at all about what happens in this meeting, or insofar as they care, there's only one thing they're concerned about. All they want is anybody but NATO. <laughs> because they know the threat to them is a man who has succeeded in winning millions of American workers to begin to think independently of the two parties that support capitalism, and that has succeeded in this language to educate and win a mass base. Today, Nader is at 6% in the national poll and 12% among youth, 10% in the state of Michigan, which means in California, we're talking close to a million people that are thinking, even though you know how this will work, how the media will work it so they, get, they don't vote for Nader, but the opportunity of what this means for the Peace and Freedom Party. You have all gone through a hard time. And I have to say that I'm here, for, many of you may know this, I'm here as your friend. Inside the Green Party, I fought to try to leave a place that's open on our slate to make sure you got your ballot status. I had Marsha come with me and speak when I ran for vice president to give a hearing. And the reason I do this is just straight self-interest. I'm extremely concerned what's happening in the Green Party. Every elected official we have in San Francisco is supporting Obama. <laughs> the fusion is current, it's gotten control of the organization, even though the overwhelming majority of its three or four hundred thousand members are opposed to them. In every vote, everywhere, Nader wins, and yet they were able to manipulate and prevent him from being a candidate. In the year 2004, when I ran with Ralph, they put up a campaign against his candidacy that was unbelievable, criminal, and they so desperate to silence him. I want to point out to you that 12 people have now been indicted for felonies for the work they did against NATO. Yeah. This could be just the beginning. This could go to the very top of the Democratic Party. Ralph Nader is more than a candidate. He's an issue. Right. And he should be the party should take a stand on this issue. Yeah. Heard. And just because maybe he doesn't use a certain word 10 times every minute, that some people here don't want to listen to the content. This is the choice you have today. Content or form. You want to really fight the ruling class? You really want to provide the rights and independence of the working class? You really want to develop an independent working class movement that defends all the minorities and every oppressed person in this world who would never waver in a post law? You can use the word socialist all you want. The Communist Party of China calls itself socialist. They have nothing to do with socialism. That's right. They are totally brutally against the working class. And anyone who cannot see that and will not take a clear, let me tell you why we're in this room and why Nader has been able to do what he's done. It's because Stalinism is dying, if not dead. We must be careful that there be no recurrence in any way the reappearance in our movement of Stalinist concepts. When I ran in 2002, 2004, and 2006 for government, we noticed an interesting pattern developed in the book of the Green Party. The largest percentage was African Americans. Second largest was Latinos. Massive ratio of young people and of the poorest people of the state. Now, any of you who heard my campaign, for some of you that might have been hard because I didn't use certain words. But we've got to learn to see the content, not the form. We have to learn what the Venezuelans learned. You know, you don't know the history of how things happen differently in Venezuela. They agreed not to use any words. <laughs> the Casa de movement said we will not use any words. And when the whole left fell, they grew. And they developed 25% control of farm. They won the leadership of all the unions. Chavez was a secret member of the organization. And they changed the history of Latin America without using rhetoric. Woo. <laughs> If you nominate Nader, you're on the front page of the paper. If you nominate Nader, your people get to speak everywhere. Not only because Nader will let you speak with him. And I would invite Gloria to come and speak. Let's be together. Let's unify our movement. Let's get together. Let's get together. Let's differences. We don't care. Let's just do it politely. That's all. Nader doesn't fear ideas. 
or people that may differ with him, that's fine. But this is an opportunity that you will only get one time in your history to change the standing of the peace and party, to recruit 10,000 members and bring a transition in your party so it begins, becomes effective. Now I want to just say one thing that nobody but Ralph Nader mentioned. But I think the one thing you have to do is to show respect for your own members who voted in your primary that they yeah, right on. Thank you.